Tall, bright stranger, you make some valid points. As of right now, the guys from Tech Syndicate are working on more benchmarks with the GTX 670 instead of the HD 7870. So, I guess we'll see. And so it shall be. Okay, so I think we really did open a can. I started the last video with like, we're about to open a can. And I meant that we were going to open the can of the AMD processor, but we opened the can of worms and bit off more than we could chew, and everyone is yelling and screaming, and I think the biggest complaint that everyone has is that the GPU was bottlenecking. Oh my god, it's bottlenecking the 850 and it's or the 8350 and it's bottlenecking the 3570K. Hey guys, run it at 800 by 600 so we can... No. 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 This is not a CPU review. What we are doing, we're taking components that people are using in the real world and we're trying to do an unbiased look at what people could possibly put together and how it would run. And are, are you going to play games at 800 by 600 or 720p if you have a 7870 and a card that will run it and push it past 30 frames a second? No, you're not. Well, and the, the fatal assumption there too is that, you know, if the GPU is bottlenecking, that all the platforms will bottleneck identically. And that's not what we actually saw in the real world. No, it's it's kind of a mess. So what we've done anyway is we've picked up an EVGA uh, GTX 670 and we did all the benchmarks again. The other thing that everybody wanted to see, people kept saying that the i5s overclock better and that the i5s have more gains when overclocking. So we overclocked the AMD 8350 to 5 gigahertz, and we overclocked the 3570K all the way to um, 4.5 gigahertz. So that's over a gigahertz that we were able to gain here using the EVGA Stinger motherboard. Uh, that's the little ITX motherboard. We tested it that way, and we also tested the power consumption because that's the third thing. People were like, okay, you can buy the AMD and save a couple dollars, but you're going to spend a billion dollars over a three-year period in electrical charges. Bills. The kilowatt hours are going to explode out your ears. So, no. No. <laughs> so Let me we're just gonna... spoil that for you right now. Yeah, no. 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 And, and if you're an Intel fan right now, the Intel is still has better per core performance usually and a lot of the productivity tests are good and as far as the gaming platform it's really good and that, it also that, uses a little bit less power that was the really weird thing a lot of people were immediately like all oh, these results totally contradict the results elsewhere and they really in a few cases they do but we're going to explain that but mostly they don't yeah i mean if you want like low res benchmarks check out hardware.info uh, uk.hardware.info it's a british website they, they ran crisis 2 uh, direct x9 at 800 by 600 and the top three CPUs in that test were the AFX 8350, the, the FX 8320, and the FX 6300. That's the six core. So there you can see that there are some people out there who are agreeing as far as the gaming goes. I'm, again, this is all about gaming. We're, we're talking gaming. Uh, and also, if you check out the Hardware Canucks review, and those guys seem to be very, very unbiased. That's what we are. We're totally unbiased people. Like, these guys are obviously paid off by AMD. Let me tell you something. We're using all Intel. In Wendell, what do you have? Intel. The 3930K, the 6-core? Yeah, you got the 6-core. I've got the 3820. Uh, we've got the 3770 floating around. This is the i5 right here. I've been playing with that thing for a long time. So we've got Intel on the building. We just happened to buy an AMD because I was like, hey, impulse buy. And then I was like, oh, what the hell? So that's really what happened, and that's why this came about. The benchmarks in this one, we're not going to do low-res benchmarks. I'm sorry, guys. We're not going to do it. What I want is real-world performance at a resolution that you might be using at home to help you better make a decision when you're building a gaming rig. That's it. That's all I care about. I don't care about all the hype. I don't care about all the nonsense. And I freaking hate synthetic benchmarks. They're not. There was kind of a Cinebench scandal a few years ago. In Intel has got a compiler that compiles programs, and I had written some stuff in their compiler that is like, oh, you're using an Intel CPU? Then do this super-optimized code path. But if you're using AMD, we're going to do it the most rock-dumb, simple way possible. And that was really bad. There's a there's actually a patch that modifies Cinebench to always think you're using an Intel CPU. And they did that a few years ago. And the AMD performance when you patched Cinebench to not detect an Intel CPU was much higher. And it was kind of a scandal. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why we always benchmark things like trying to. Independent games uh, that don't really have optimizations for one or the other. Uh, one other thing I want to mention, we did apply a hotfix. Windows, there is a hotfix for Windows. Two uh, of them. Two hotfixes. And they're not available through Windows Update yet. You have to actually email uh, and, and then email uh, Microsoft, and then they'll send you the hotfixes. There's a problem with um, the CPU scheduler in, in Windows 7 and maybe Windows 8, but definitely Windows 7. 
and uh, there's a hot fix that you can get and it, because Windows will just randomly move uh, processes that are using a lot of CPU time from core to core to core and it doesn't necessarily do that in a way that is very efficient. On yeah, the it ends AMD. up clearing the cache when it shouldn't clear the cache. and Yeah, it's not not a good... But the patch fixes that, and so this may have something to do with it. Now, first off, before we get to the benchmarks, let's go through the specs on each of these systems. For the Intel system, we're using the EVGA Z77 Stinger. It's a mini ITX motherboard, but it is it does not slack as far as the features go, and it's one hell of an overclock to be able to get the 3570K up to 4.5 gigahertz with not much trouble at all. Uh, we're using 2100 megahertz ADATA RAM. Uh, we've got the uh, EVGA... GTX 670, and I'm using the newest driver set currently, which is uh, 310.90. Uh, we're also using the ADATA SX900. Uh, that's an SSD, 256 gigabyte SSD, and the read speeds on that are around 550, and the write speeds are around 550 as well, so that's a pretty fast SSD. And for the cooling unit on this, we've got the Corsair H100. Um, and then on top there, you can see I I've, I've threw a... Um, a 200 millimeter uh, NZXT fan just to keep everything on the motherboard nice and cool, especially those V-Regs because we are doing a pretty crazy overclock. For the AMD system, we're using the Asus M5A99FX Pro Revision 2 motherboard uh, and um, we've overclocked the AMD. Same everything else, same GPU, same, you know. Everything. Same everything. Uh, the only thing that's really different is the, the motherboard and that motherboard's a decent motherboard. We just ordered it and... Uh, yeah, I mean, is there anything else? That's, oh, yeah, the other thing, the only other thing that's different is that the AMD is being cooled by the Corsair H80 in push-pull. So it's about the same temperature, maybe a couple degrees warmer, but still. That's really the only difference in the two systems. Starting off with the Crisis Warhead. Just for reference, guys, we benchmark at the exact same spot in both systems. We do the exact same things in both tests, and we also have the settings identical on both sides. And in this case, the settings are completely maxed out. And you can see here at 1080p and 1440p, uh, the AMD wins its stock. However, with the overclock, uh, the Intel is a little bit faster at 1080p, uh, but it cannot quite keep up at 1440p. Arma 2 Operation Arrowhead. I benchmarked at the exact same location on both systems with the exact same settings. The AMD absolutely destroyed the i5-3570K. It wasn't even close. Far Cry 3 is another game that seems to favor the AMD. As you can see, AMD easily beats Intel in this one as well. It's, again, not, not even close. Now in our last test, uh, the AMD did beat the uh, 3570K in most of our Metro tests. With the new drivers, the GTX 670 and the overclock, the i5 3570K is ahead of AMD in every category. Overclocked, stock clocked, 1080p and 1440p. The i5 3570K wins by a few. We wanted to do natural selection too as well because that's a very CPU intensive game, so we did that. And as you can see, the AMD is slightly ahead of the i5 3570K. I also want to note that we did gain a lot of FPS in this game with the overclock. And that makes sense to me because this game does like the CPU. All right, let's talk about Skyrim to piss off all those neckbeards. Now, we do run a very deconsolized version of this game. At 1080p, uh, the AMD wins at the stock clock. Other than that, it's i5 all the way. The i5 also gains a lot at the 1080p overclock, as you can see here. One other thing I want to note is that at 1440p, it looks like we're having a little bit of bottlenecking, but the resolutions are still totally playable, and uh, both CPUs can play this game without much problem at all, even with the texture mods. But the i5 is the winner here. Trine 2. This game with all the filters is absolutely ridiculous. They even warn you when you uh, turn on full scene anti-aliasing that, hey, this is going to screw up your life. But we did it anyway, and we did the test. And this one, um, yeah, the overclock and the stock clock are almost identical in this, so that's telling me that there's some bottlenecking going on somewhere. Even with the overclock, we're not really adding that many FPS. Uh, it looks like a tie at real-world resolutions. Uh, this doesn't really tell us much about the CPUs, but it does tell us that you can play the, this game, you know, on either CPU without any trouble. If you get that AMD, it's going to cost you $800 a month in electricity. That's what I heard a lot of. So the AMD is created using the 32 nanometer manufacturing process, and the Intel is created using the 22 uh, nanometer manufacturing process. So just right there, you're going to have lower power consumption with the Intel. How much does that really matter in the real world, and should you be complaining? We took these measurements using a kilowatt. Uh, you can get this from ThinkGeek or pretty much anywhere, but basically it's a device that plugs in line in your wall socket. You plug it into the wall, and you plug your computer into that, and it will tell you the voltage, the frequency of the voltage, how many kilowatt hours have been run through it since it was last reset, uh, what the current wattage, what the current load is on the line, and a whole bunch of other things. Now we wanted to use this device because as opposed to a lot of the you know applications you can get for your computer where you can see what's going on, 
This one measures the energy coming right out of the wall, which is what you're paying for. And that's what we wanted to look at. All right, let's break it down with Logan's STFU formula for determining how much electricity costs when you're using these two parts. So we'll start off with the average price of uh, electricity in kilowatt hours and in dollars. And that's 12.8 cents per kilowatt hour in America. So the difference at the uh, stock clock in load if you're gaming for like three hours a day is 70 watts. Now over three hours, 70 watts equals 0.21 kilowatt hours. We follow in here. So 0.21 kilowatt hours, uh, multiply that by 12.8 cents and we get 0.2688 dollars per day or about 2.7 cents a day. That's what you're paying difference. So in a month, it's about I don't know, eight or nine dollars, and then in a year, around ten dollars. So every year that you have the AMD CPU, you're spending about an extra ten dollars a year in gaming. Now, over a three-year period, since the i5 is thirty dollars more, you're saving about a dollar with the AMD over three years, because up front, you're saving money. If we factor in interest, oh man, your head's going to start hurting. Now, to be <laughs> fair, let's do this again with the overclock, because most of you guys are going to be overclocking, and there is a bigger uh, gap between the two when you're overclocking. Now at the overclock, uh, the AMD was 375 watts and the Intel was only 252 watts. So there's a bigger difference there of 123 watts. So let's do the math with 123 watts. So with an overclock machine, uh, AMD versus Intel, every year you're going to be spending about an extra $17. Over a three-year period, that's a difference of $50. But since the AMD is $30 um, less expensive, you're still, you know, only out 20 bucks over a three-year period. Honestly. Everybody... That's the STFU formula. Share it on the webs. There'll, guess, be, a, there'll be a link to it on uh, Tech Syndicate. You guys can use it and share it. I guess if your electricity costs like $5 per kilowatt hour, you might have a problem, but... Yeah. <laughs> then you're like talking to a huge delta. I mean, even in like New York City, it's like, I don't know, 16, 17 cents. Here it's like 8 cents. So guys, on Tech Syndicate, thank you guys for being awesome. As usual, I mean, that's why you guys are hanging out on Tech Syndicate, right? Everybody on YouTube, what's up? People on uh, Build a PC, I am not your enemy. I am your friend. I want to help you guys get a good machine. I'm not motivated by any agenda other than my own, and my own is to have fun. Really, that's what we're doing here. We're having fun. We're benchmarking things. You guys can expect more benchmarks, and I really want to focus on organic, real-world tests at resolutions that you guys may be using yourself. And if it's above 30 frames per second with the certain parts, that's something that you guys will be doing, right? If you guys can get 1080p at over 30 frames a second, would you not do it? I'm going to stand by my 7870 video from the other day because a lot of the resolutions were very playable at 1080p. And that's what you guys want because a lot of people are going to be looking at the i5 and the, uh, and the AMD and they're going to be getting a 7870. And that's a real world system that people are going to buy. Don't you think that they would you know, be happy to know that the 7870 and the, uh, the AMD A-Core were a better pair? I think, I think they would. It's also okay. true that, you know, on average, you want those things to be paired together really well. You don't want to make your rig too top-heavy with too much GPU and not enough CPU or vice versa. Yeah, you want to build a balanced system. Have fun with this video. I'm sure there'll be a few uh, haters out there. The, the, you know, there's a sale on Haterade down at the dollar store. <laughs> it's it's do a dollar. It's like, why don't we just get an i3? No. No. Honestly. People still talking about the i3? Or And the Pentium G680 or whatever. Okay. I mean, you guys can do that and, like, put, like, a, you know, a GTX 680 with an i5 or, an, I mean, an i3 or whatever in there, and it'll be basically like a, putting a rocket on a tricycle. It'll go really fast until it explodes <laughs> into a mountain. But, no, it, it, that's a, it's fast, especially for the, the, the games that only take advantage of two cores. But a lot of the games coming out now, a lot of the games coming out in the future are only going to be uh, more optimized, and they're only going to run better with more cores. That's just the way the world is going. And as we see more and more hotfixes come out, and like the AMD FX platform, we updated the drivers on that. Um, you know, a lot, of the, a lot of the reviews that we talk about, and a lot of the ones that really, really trashed it, were day one reviews. And this is not a day one review. We have more mature drivers. Uh, we have, you know, a more mature, more mature platform and some hotfixes from, from Microsoft. So it's a bit different now. And at the end of the day, just look at all the information. Look at the data. Don't be a fanboy for one side or the other. Don't get butt hurt. Everybody loves that phrase, butt hurt. It's just great. <laughs> so, and get what's best for you. You know, if you're getting a certain graphics card and the tests look good, do it. And as far as I'm concerned, if you're gaming and you don't mind 17 bucks per month 
or per year extra on with the power the eight core is it's a no-brainer for gaming right now for me it just feels smooth and it feels really snappy in windows too we haven't done all those tests yet but that's pretty much it for me I don't know. It's like we don't. I don't believe that they got this result. It's made up. It's like, all right, Nick Beard, let's let's see. <laughs> it's like, here's some video. Enjoy that eight hours. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's some people that would go through it with a fine tooth comb and be like, wait a minute, something. <laughs> but we photoshopped all of it. It's like the, the memory card glitched or something, and it's like oh, I could tell by some of the pixels there's a cut here. <laughs> it's like honestly, we're, it's all After Effects. I mean, and we're robots. <laughs> yeah, we're just an AI running somewhere. Yeah in an AMD factory that doesn't exist since they don't have a foundry anymore. <laughs> awesome. All right, guys. Um, join, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.